So the first thing that you're going to want to do when it comes to setting up a Syrian hamster enclosure is making sure that it meets the minimum square inches of floor space. In Canada and the USA, the minimum square footage for a hamster is 450 square inches. However, most people will recommend 600 square inches for a Syrian hamster. There are many different types of cages you can use for a hamster, um, but for this setup, I am going to be using a 40 gallon breeder. This is actually a reptile terrarium. Um, and it is 648 square inches. So the first official step is going to be to wipe down your enclosure. I am just using some water and a cloth and I'm just wiping it out to make sure I remove any dust. Um, when I did open it, there was quite a bit of dust on the outside of the enclosure. So I'm sure there was some on the inside as well. You wanna make sure before you set up an enclosure that all the dust that might've gotten in there from transport or anything like that is out. Um, just because not only it looks better, but you want to make sure that everything in there is clean and safe. The next step is you're going to want to add the bedding. Now you're going to want to have about six to eight inches of bedding in at least the deepest part of your enclosure, but more is always better. I am using an aspen bedding, which is the only natural wood shavings you can use. Um, any other type is unsafe due to the oils in the wood. So if you want to use a wood shavings like I am, make sure you use aspen. You could also use an unscented paper bedding, but I personally prefer the look and the price of wood shavings, so that is what I opted to use. I started putting my bedding on the left side because this area is where it's going to be the deepest. Because my wheel is a little bit tall, on the right side where I'm going to be putting my wheel, um, I'm not able to put as much bedding. So I'm adding a little bit more on the left side and doing a slow gradient down. In the area where I opted not to put a lot of bedding, I took some Eco Earth um, coconut fiber and I'm adding that where the wheel is going to be. To separate the Eco Earth from the shavings and make sure that they don't fall, um, granted my hamster will destroy it almost immediately, but putting it in I did add some sphagnum moss. It just looked nicer and hopefully it will keep it separated and of course it's another texture for my hamster to play around in. Now that all your substrate is added, you can go ahead and start adding your necessities. First one that we're going to be adding is the water bottle. So in order to save some time and not have this video be too long, um, I didn't film the process of me washing each item before I added it into the cage but I promise that everything has been washed before I added it in. Now your water bottle, if you're using a caged one, could just simply attach to the side of your cage. Just hook on there and everything's good. However, if you're using a 40 gallon terrarium for your hamster's cage, you're not gonna have this bar option. Now you could go out and purchase a water bottle stand, which might be kind of expensive or hard to come by. You could actually go and just get some Velcro. Um, if you get some adhesive Velcro strips and you put them one on your water bottle and one on the tank, you can attach it that way and easily take it on and off to refill and clean. And that is all you have to do to attach your water bottle to the tank. As a precautionary measure in case my water bottle drips or if my hamster doesn't like the water bottle for whatever reason because that has happened to people, I did add a little water dish right underneath the water bottle. Not far over from the water dish, I added a identical dish which is going to be my food dish. These are actually both reptile food dishes um, but overall I just like them better than the ones that were available in the hamster section. Now that the food and water are out of the way, you go ahead and add the sand bath. Now the sand bath is a natural way for your hamster to clean themselves. 
In a lot of cases, your hamster will generally end up using the sand bath as a litter tray also. The final necessary item in your enclosure before we get into the fun items is your chews. Because your hamster's teeth are constantly growing, they must always be chewing to make sure that they don't grow too long. I would recommend having different types, um, shapes, styles, textures, materials, because you never know what your hamster is going to like. So if they pick a favorite, then at least you know that they will still have a couple chews that they like in your enclosure. Now, there's only a couple more things to add to your hamster's enclosure, and that is going to be the hides and the fun items. For the hides, I recommend, once again, having different sizes and textures. Some will be plastic, some will be wood, probably. Now, the last thing you want to add to your enclosure are the fun items. These are just random items that don't really serve much of a purpose, just besides either looking good or being fun for your hamster. The first thing that I always like to add are tubes. Tubes are fun, tubes are great. Everyone loves tubes. When it comes to hamsters, tubes. Love them, want them all. So I had to buy a tube. Now for a Syrian hamster, the most recommended tubes are Have a Trail Ovo tubes. Now the last two items for inside my enclosure are just some wooden bendy bridges. Um, I got a small one and a medium one, and these are nice because they're so versatile. Now that basically is everything that I'm adding to my enclosure. Um, once again, wheel is missing, but I'll be adding it, adding it later. Now this would be the point where if you're going to add lighting that you would do so. Lighting is entirely optional. Hamsters can't see red, so if you use a red light, you'll be able to view your hamster in the dark without your hamster knowing that the light is on, so it won't disturb them at all. The number one thing about using a red light though, is you wanna make sure that it's just a standard red bulb from like a hardware store. Um, you do not want it to be a reptile bulb because reptile bulbs give off heat and for a hamster, you don't want that. Now I put the light into a little dome lamp. These dome lamps you can find in the reptile section, but that will include the video of setting up a cage for your Syrian hamster. I had so much fun setting this up. But that is all for today. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when I upload. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.